Welcome! In this video I'll show you how to deploy a Node.js application on Linux as a systemd service. Let's start with some basics and define what systemd is roughly. I say roughly because systemd is actually a complex software suite and it would be hard to encompass all of its features in this video and not necessary because we're primarily interested in systemd's capability to run services. And that's actually one of its main uses, is the init system on most Linux distros, and uh, it's a systems and service manager for Linux. Systemd is, as I mentioned, the init system in most mainstream distributions, that means all Debian-based distros like Ubuntu, Mint, etc., all Arch-based distros, and all Red Hat distros like Fedora and Red Hat Enterprise Linux, all run Systemd. It's the mainstream in its system and you'll find it most likely on your Linux server distribution nowadays. So that makes it very appropriate to deploy your Next.js app on it because it's already a part of your Linux OS. So systemd can run services, but besides that, you can specify specifically how to run services. It can start, restart and stop services on startup and it can also manage dependencies, which is very useful. These dependencies can be system dependencies like networking, for example, but they can also be other services like a database. Most database systems on Linux have an option to run as a systemd service, and they actually run as a systemd service by default. I'm talking about MySQL, Postgres, MongoDB, etc. So you can specify in your Node.js systemd service that a MySQL database, for example, is a dependency. And systemd will make sure that that dependency is met before your service starts. And your service will not start if that dependency is not met, avoiding unnecessary errors in your application. So now let's go ahead and talk how we're actually going to deploy a Node.js application as a systemd service. First of all, I've prepared a repository with some files we're gonna need for this demo. This repository is linked in the description below. It's in my personal GitHub account and it's called deploy node app with systemd. Here we have a directory test app. In that directory, I have a very simple Node.js application, which is not necessary essentially, but I'm going to use it in this video. So if you want to follow along with me, you can call the rep, call on the repo and have the exact test app that I'm using in the video. This test app is just a node app with a single index.js file that is dependency free uses the http node module let me zoom so that you can see better the http node module to start a simple http server which does a single thing on every request it says the status code to 200 which is okay success sets the content type to text plain so it returns plain text and writes hello world then the response ends that's it it listens to a port that is 3000 or the process environment variable port. This is important because when you deploy an application with systemd, you can set environment variables, which are of course necessary in any deployment. And with that environment variable port, you can actually set the port on which your application should run. This is the bare minimum. You would, if you're deploying a real application, you would probably need multiple environment variables, but I will show you how to set them and you can just use the same process. Besides the test application in that repo, there's a readme file which is just used to describe uh, what this repository is for. It will also have a link to the YouTube video I'm making right now in the future. But the other file we care about is this node app template.service file. Systemd services are defined as plain text files which is great, very easy to define. You can find a lot of documentation about the syntax of these files online. There are a lot of resources. This template I've prepared so that it can be helpful for you as a template to deploy specifically a Node.js application. This is of course the minimum you would need. You can extend it further, but this is very useful if you're just deploying a Node app. Basically, we have to create this services file in the appropriate folder for systemd so that it can recognize a new service. But first, before that, I would recommend that we run the application to make sure it actually runs correctly before setting it up as a service. So I already have these. My test app is located in my opt directory. 
here it is. And uh, I have all of its files. I'm interested in the index.js file in the source directory. Of course, to run it, I would need Node.js on my Linux server, which I already have. If I run Node V, I will see that it's available. So to run it, the node binary is in user bin node. And then I have to specify the path to my Node.js application. My app is in opt, test app, the name of the application, source index.js is the main file. I like to put applications in the opt directory as it's defined for that purpose in the Linux file system specification. But you can put the directory anywhere in the file system. As long as you know the path, that will be fine. If we execute that now, the node application runs correctly and we get the console walk that the server is listening on the localhost 3000, on port 3000 essentially. And if I test that now in my browser, I can test port 3000 and the server responds as it is defined. It returns the plain text, hello world. That's great. Of course, I've now run this application in my terminal. So that's not a way to run an app permanently. It wouldn't work if I restart this system. And I want to make it into a service. I know the path of the application and that it works correctly. Now, to make a service, all service files should be in lib, systemd, system. Here, if I list all files, you see that you already have a plethora of services and other files. So we have to create our service file here. And I'll do that. I'll call it testapp.service. You need a dot service extension to indicate to system data this is a service. Test app, you can replace with your application name. And I need to do that as a super user, of course. Okay, now that that is done, I can open this file in my text editor as it's empty right now. And I'll use VS Code. Now I have my app template, which again, you can access my service file template which you can get from the GitHub repository linked in the description. But I'll explain each, each uh, line of this file to you so that you understand how it works. So I'll paste this into my test app as service. And again, I need to work as a super user right now. All right, so we have a couple of categories, unit, service, and install. In unit, we have pretty self-explanatory properties. Description is just a plain text description of the application. I will call that a web API service. You can uh, specify a more detailed description of your application, which would be helpful for any system administrator which does not understand in depth the function of your app or what it is for. Documentation, here you can link a documentation for your application if you have any. In this case, I have a GitHub link which wouldn't even work, but it's just for demonstrative purposes. Now, after is a dependency, and that dependency is network.target. This is a minimal dependency for a Node.js web application because we are depending on binding to a port in order to start this HTTP server. So we need a network to work. And systemd will take care of that for us as long as we specify this after dependency. Next, we have the actual service category. Here we set an environment variable. We specify environment equals the environment variable and then equals its value. You can specify other environment variables because you might very likely need them. Like for example, an API key like this. You can specify as many as you want. In this case, I want only the port variable and I'll set it to 3001, for example. Type simple is the type of service. An OGS application would in most cases be simple. You can read more about systemd services and their types. But it just means that this is a service that starts and runs without spawning any extra processes, etc. Just a simple application. User. Here you have to set up to set the user, Linux user, which would start the application. In my case, I will specify my user, which I'm logged in as. When, if you're deploying an application, you might want to actually create a special user for running your web or Node.js application. Why is that? Simply because 
by having extra, an extra user for that, you can specify specifically what permissions that user has for access in the file system and everything. It's more secure, it's the best practice generally. In this case, I'll use my user because this is a tutorial and my user is actually, you know, perfect to run this app to demonstrate it. All right, the exec start command is essential. It's actually what command will start the service. And here we have user bin node, of course. This is just our Node.js binary. And then we need to specify the path of our entry point JavaScript file, the file of our service. In my case, as I mentioned, my service is in opt, test app, source, index.js. Restart on failure. This directive will make sure that our service will restart whenever the application fails. This is important because you want your application to keep running, especially if it's deployed on production. And lastly, we have the install category, wanted by multi-user target. So this, um, there are multiple targets in which the system might be running. Essentially, this ensures that the service will start at a certain target before even the graphical user interface starts. This is just the state of the system and when a service will start. If you're running an OJS application deployed on a Linux system, multi-user target is fine. If you don't have the wanted by directive, even if your everything else here is specified and you enable your service, it would not start because it's not wanted by anything, except if it's not wanted by another service that can start it. And that's essentially what this is. We start the service when a certain target is reached in the operating system. And that's pretty much it. Everything you need to specify a service in system, uh, a system D service. As you can see, most of these are pretty self-explanatory plain text description fields. We have dependencies and the main part of the service is under the service category where we specify environment variables, the user and the actual executable. But in general, that's very straightforward. Now, if I save my service file, Retri as a super user, because this directory is not in my, it's not owned by my user. And now that it's saved, I can actually start my service. And how this happens is I can open my terminal and use the systemctl utilities, command line utilities, which you can check out right here. They're used exactly to manage systemd units. I say units because systemd is not just for services. There are other units as well. But in this case, we care about services exclusively. So as a super user, I would say systemctl daemon reworld. What this does is it reworlds the systemctl, uh, the systemd daemon to load any new services or unload any. And as I added a new service test app, this will make sure that it's loaded. And now if I say execute systemctl status and the name of my service, I will actually see a status for it. You see my test app.service, then my description, which I specified in my service file. I also get my documentation link and its status. The service is loaded. This doesn't mean that it's actually active or working. As you can see, it's disabled. That's its preset and it's inactive and dead. So to start it, I can execute systemctl start test app and that will start the service. If I check the status again, now we will see that the service is active, indicated by the green text. It's still disabled though, but it's running. And we see in the output, the actual console log that the server is listening on port 3001. And if I test now, actually in my browser, my service is running as expected. Now, the problem with that it started right now is that if I restart this system, it wouldn't start because it's actually not enabled. To make sure that the service is enabled, I can say systemctl execute, sorry. I can execute systemctl enable test app. As you can see, this enables the service by simply creating a symlink at a certain directory. And now if I execute status again, my service is enabled and active. Now, if I restart this system, 
in most cases this system the system you're deploying to would be a server on a cloud uh, running any linux distro if the server restarts your service will automatically start after all dependencies are met like in this case networking is our dependency but you might have others all right this service again is running currently to stop or remove it you can stop the service by executing stop and specifying the service name now if i run status again i can see that the service is inactive and i can see since when when it died what its duration was etc i can also disable it so that it doesn't start when the system starts by executing disable test app as you can see the the actual interface of this command line utility is very, very intuitive. And now the service is disabled. To completely remove it, all you have to do is go again to the uh, lib systemd system folder and remove the service file, which is testapp.service. If I now execute systemctl daemon reload, and attempt to see the status of my service my service is no longer found and if i attempt to execute it it's not running so this is how you create start enable and remove a system d service that is an ojs application in linux with this i'll wrap today's video if you enjoy the content don't forget to subscribe to get notified when another video is released take care